When we've been talking about programming a computer so far, we've been talking about programming just the computer that you're interacting with. We write a program and it runs on our computer. We might give it input and it responds to the input that we've given it. There might be some data that it reads from a local disk and it processes that data and does something with it. But it is essentially a program running on one computer interacting with a user on that computer and processing a data on that computer. That is, of course, a very important way that computers operate, but another very important way that computers operate is to interact with other computers. We are all familiar with that in many places, not the least of which is with web browsers. Right? If I go visit a website, say NewYorkTimes.com, this document that it is loading, that it's displaying right now, is not a document that was displayed on my computer. Rather, I'm using a web browser to somehow go to a computer that's sitting someplace else, right? A server that New York Times is managing and returning this data that I asked for. This is a this web browsing is, spe is a specific example of what we call client server programming. Our client is the web browser and it is interacting with a server which is the New York Times server. The web is one particular kind of client server programming but there are lots of other kinds as well. When we think about the web even we often think about it as a way of accessing information right and a lot of that is accessing static information that is this New York Times homepage is more or less just sitting there right in a fairly static form right now waiting to be delivered to whoever asks for it. There are actually some elements of this page that are dynamically created like I'm logged in so up here in the top right it shows my account name. This account name that it displays is going to be different for everybody that loads this web page. So part of this web page is static, most of it, and part of it is dynamically computed. There are lots of other ways that the web and servers respond to clients with dynamic computation. It is, it is doing some computation on the server to decide what to respond to the user. You're probably familiar with uh, autocomplete in uh, your web browser. So if I ask for a web page like with a URL, right, it'll autocomplete and start looking to suggest what particular web page to bring up. But this is based on my own personal history and this is based on information on my computer. There are other kinds of autocomplete that are actually much more sophisticated. If I start saying typing in programming is, right, it came up with some suggestions. Programming is hard, terrible, well that's obviously wrong. Programming is fun and easy, right, those are really good autocompletions. But that information wasn't stored on my computer. In fact, when you type into this uh, search bar in Chrome, on most web browsers, every single character that you type is being sent to a server, in this case to Google servers. And Google is invisibly and silently sending back to your web browser a list of suggestions that the browser can display. This is another kind of client server programming. I actually don't like this particular uh, auto-completion, so let's look about what Google has to say about Python. Python is um, fun, right? Programming is fun again, Python fun facts, right? This is actually a very dynamic computational activity. And if you go and type this same thing tomorrow, you might get different results because these completion suggestions are based on a database being built up on Google servers in response to what other people are uh, typing into their web browsers right now. So how does this client server programming work? What's the even structure of this? We know that there is something called the internet and we know how these that these computers are connected together in some way but what we're going to be talking about for the next bit is what the structure of this client server programming is, how it works a little bit under the hood, and how we are going to write our own programs to do it ourselves. So let's dive in by looking just a little bit about what the structure of the internet looks like.